Hey everybody, thanks for coming back. Today I'll be sharing with you my journey and top five things that help me get to where I need to be in my journey through cybersecurity. Stay tuned and let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back. Ginger Hacker here. Wanted to kind of quickly do a quick little video to kind of start a new, hopefully video series I'm gonna be starting to go to here in the next few weeks. So everyone trying to get into cybersecurity it is a very, depending on the path you're taking, can be tedious, can be quick. Um, I wanted to start doing some small videos, uh, probably ranging around between like maybe like seven to 10 minutes where I plan to go and actually talk to, which to me are gonna be a few colleagues and friends that are currently in IT roles, and kind of ask just a basic quick five questions of kind of what they would ask or what they would love to give advice for when it comes to breaking in and getting into cybersecurity. So to kind of start this off, I wanna go ahead and just do these questions on myself and kind of give you guys a little bit more background behind me of my journey, which got me into the roles which I'm currently in. So. First question is going to be a, could you share your journey into cybersecurity field and what initially sparked your interest in this career? So for me on that question, I was a police officer for about seven years. Um, I've been in the military now for going on 15 years and I was starting to kind of get a little bored and taxed out with law enforcement. Um, it's a great profession. You get to get back to your community. Um, hundred percent support our men and women in blue. Thank you guys so much for your service. And, I, I'm in the military currently in a cyber protection team role. So oddly enough, doing that more and more uh, training I got to do, I learned and I kind of realized I really enjoyed cyber work. I was a cyber threat intelligence analyst. So what I got to do is kind of build and work off of threat profiles for um, certain uh, threats or groups that would be targeting the Doden or uh, army networks, uh, US and abroad in some of our UCOM locations. So as I progressed slowly on that, I had a few good mentors where I came in, like, you should, you should come jump into cybersecurity. You should really look into it. Um, I realized from my time as being a police officer and leaving as a detective, my analytical skills and ability to communicate and ask certain questions and figure out why was very solid. I was very good at digging into questions, digging into the, okay, well, why is this happening? And then providing a solution of how it did or going and asking the right questions to get the answer I needed. So that slowly progressed and I slowly began to kind of start my path, which for me took about a year. So I needed to go and kind of learn the lingo, do a little bit of knowledge gap because I had a, I had a criminal justice degree. I didn't have really have anything to do or know on cybersecurity. So how my path took me is I went and I went back to school. I obtained a master's in cybersecurity from Grand Canyon University. Um, certification wise, I picked up a few open source certifications from the military I was able to attend. Um, my CompTIA Security Plus, which I call the gateway cert to IT and cyber. It's going to teach you a lot of general basic uh, lingo, terms you should know, uh, security baselines. And for most government jobs, it's going to be 8570 compliance, which I know has changed to a different term, but I always refer to 8570 compliance. And allowing what that does, it allows you to be on a government's work computer or network. And lo and behold, uh, about now going on about three years later, um, I began to start my interviews and kind of start that process. And I picked up my first job working for Dep Department of Homeland Security as a senior information security analyst. And then roughly a little under a year after that, I was picked up by a financial institute I work for currently. I'm still as a senior information security analyst, still currently in the military doing my, my duty there with my cyber protection team when I can. And, uh, but yeah, that's kind of how my path kind of took me there. I wanted to kind of get the break lifestyle of going into office. I now have a, I work four tens. I get a one day remote day. It's, it's pretty awesome. I very much enjoy it. All right. Question two, what does a typical day look like in your role? And what are some of the most challenging aspects of your job in cybersecurity? So the way I start my day is I, I get into my work pretty early. I'm up by five and I'm in the office on my in office days around six. The way I start my day is I open up my email. Um, we have a group mailbox as well. So I'll kind of go through there, see if there's any kind of like immediate ad hoc or kind of quick acting things that need to get taken care of. We do stand up meetings um, periodically throughout the day and just throughout our team to make sure everyone's getting everything they need to done. If anyone needs any help with anything. 
Um, and then I am currently at a tier one level. So pretty much what that means is we have our SIM and our store that does logging and analysis, which we do all of our cases on. And as soon as a case or some type of detection fires, um, it, I grab that said detection and then I just, I work it like normal. So some cases, depending on complexity, can take anywhere between 15 minutes to an hour, depending on the complexity of it. Um, sometimes we'll have to reach out to additional teams for deconfliction um, or reach out to our tier twos and tier threes, depending on the complexity of the case, if we need assistance kind of closing it to determine if it's malicious or not malicious. And ideally that is my day, my normal work day, which is a 10 hour day. I would say I work roughly between about maybe 15 to 25 different cases. So, and this can be a mix between web proxy, Kubernetes, uh, GCP, Azure, like tons of stuff that can kind of just come across our plate. Um, so it's a nice wide plate of kind of certain rules and detections that we look for. Um, and yeah, that's kind of like my day to day when I get to go into the SOC. So security operations there. So let's move on to question three. So advice for aspiring professionals. For someone looking to start a career in cybersecurity in 2024, what skills and qualifications would you recommend for them to focus on acquiring? So when it comes to becoming a cybersecurity analyst, there's a lot of things I think people think of when it comes to moving into a new role. There's going to be that aspect of it's a really big change and you need to make sure that you understand a good baseline of what you're talking about. Um, this is simply even small things such as learning different terminology and lingos. Um, for all my military folks out there, it's learning all the acronyms. Once again, in cyber, there's also plenty of acronyms you'll be learning and getting into. Um, some would, some can argue I'm a hat flip coin flip on this kind of, when it comes to certifications, having tons of certifications does not make you a good analyst. It does help when it comes to grabbing some maybe additional knowledge and showing that you have a good learning base of being able to grab and actually learn, learn something you're getting into. And you can still apply that to any kind of role or job you get into. So I would definitely still say like, look for in one trying to get into a new career on top of trying to work a normal current job is uh, you want to do it in a, on a financially smart basis, right? So there's tons of free resources. So I've mentioned it before in a few of my other posts and chats, either through via here, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, you have try hack me, hack the box, Coursera, Pico CTF, um, Udenemy, uh, tons of sites that give you plenty of means to kind of dive in and learn the techno technology terms, uh, YouTube, professor Messer, great source, uh, to get your sec plus and even learn and study off that. There's tons of phone applications that you can download for free. Um, that get practice tests. There's quizlets. I mean, if you literally just kind of jump on Google and type in some, something you want to learn with cybersecurity, it's a very quick and easy thing to get into. So my challenge to people though, would just be time management, trying to find time to learn and get into this new skill is going to take time away from family activities you like to do. Maybe you're a gamer. You like to game when you get off your day and working a 10, eight hour day, and then coming home just to go study for another two to three hours and a new career or skill that you're trying to pick up can be pretty daunting and hard to do. So it comes really down to also kind of really finding some time for time management and getting into and finding what kind of role or niche you're going to get into. Um, I would recommend try hack me. It's a very much a crawl walk run. It can get you into a great few handful of different type of learning paths and different things from log analysis, basic Linux, Python, Splunk, um, you name it. Um, and you can probably dive into it and find a room that can give you a quick little tutorial on what you're doing. So, all right, let's see. So for learning and development, how do you keep up with the rapidly evolving landscape of cybersecurity threats and technologies? Are there specific resources or practices you find invaluable? Um, there's a few, so there's tons of blogs, tons of learning. I love to network and talk. I am a extroverted IT guy. I am a chatty Cathy. I can pick up or talk to anybody I want to and just kind of start to pick their brain on things I want to know or I'm curious about. So with mine, it can be reaching out to people I know that are smarter than me or maybe have a better grasp of something. Um, there's a few newsletters I jump into when it comes to like Dartnet Diaries. Um, I know Google has some great ones too for some of their AI and automation they have coming out. Microsoft, Splunk, now Cisco, uh, CrowdStrike. Um, there's tons of information you can sign up for just going onto their sites and kind of looking into those. 
um, to include uh, like I, some of my followers I like to look into, which is going to go into the next question. So I won't go too deep into it, but like professor Messer, um, network Chuck, John Hammond, um, attending conferences, even when it comes to development and learning. So there's a big conference every year in Las Vegas called DEF CON. Um, here in Arizona, there's also another one called cactus con. It's kind of a smaller one. It's ideally just a huge conference where a bunch of nerds, hackers, it folks get together and they share concepts. They do learnings, classrooms. Um, there's badge creations. It's, it's a really cool environment for new and old IT cyber folks. So you'll meet some noobs, you'll meet some gurus, you'll meet some SMEs. Um, definitely a good place to go and kind of just network out, get your name out there, start talking to people and kind of just see what kind of interests you. So those would, I would say would be some things that they should look into and kind of getting into if they're wanting to kind of learn or div dive deeper into this evolving landscape we call cybersecurity. And then question five, um, inspirational figures. So who are your role models in the cybersecurity industry or related fields and how have they influenced you in your approach to your career? So uh, the father of all father, Ginger Hackers, John Hammond, huge shout out. Uh, got to meet him in this last DEF CON, uh, fanboyed out a little bit, but uh, I think some of his work he does is fantastic. So, and kind of seeing, and then same thing for Network Chuck, Professor Messer, um, I have a few of my military mentors that have kind of gotten me to where I am today as well with conversations, positive reinforcement. Um, it's, it's ideally who is going to be there to help push you or kind of who are you going to look to as a mentor or motivator to say, wow, I really like what that person is doing. And if I could ever get to that level, that would be fantastic. Um, I have my coworkers I currently talk to and to include my manager that really give me great positive reinforcement and good positive and negative feedback when things need to get better, tightened, tuned up. Um, cause if everyone was perfect, it would be, oh, you're doing great. Keep up the work. Like you're, you're going to have a really good mentor, or a really good person you can talk to that says, Hey, look, you're doing great on this, but this task you could really improve yourself on. And here's how you can do it. So those are some of my quick mentors just off the top of my head of how, and they've helped me kind of get to where I wanted to today. So those are the questions I plan on kind of asking some of my next few folks I plan on getting onto my channel. So looks like it's running us about 12 minutes. So I'm hoping to keep these videos anywhere, probably between 10 to 15 minutes, but hope you guys enjoyed this kind of info. Um, it's really good. And I think really informative to have folks trying to leave that security of a job they're possibly currently in into a new role. You need to hear firsthand what it was like. So I left mine seven years in moving into a new career. It's terrifying. I'm married, two kids. You need to make sure it's a good move and you have that support as well when it comes to family and that process. Make sure that you understand and, under, and are fairly aware that depending on the role you're getting into, you might be starting back at bottom level one um, and then slowly moving up your way to show your competence and then get to that role in that salary range, I'm assuming, most people are looking for when they hear, oh, I'm going to jump into the cyber role and find this new cyber job and clear six figures. It is possible when you're moving from whatever job you're at to an entry level role. Um, it just depends on the company, your skills that you're going to be able to bring to that table and show and justify, hey, look, I'm worth X amount of dollars and X amount of time. And this is why you should hire me. And hiring can be difficult. There's going to be plenty of times I can tell you all firsthand, I applied multiple different applications and jobs. I did multiple interviews for two, three round roles and I get, I'd get told, no, Hey, we found a better candidate. So be, be prepared for rejection. It's going to happen. But Hey, thanks so much for sticking around. If you have so for this, uh, this long, uh, smash that like, and subscribe button. I hope to have some more of this content coming out and Hey, always remember keep hacking.